Today, in my opinion, was a pretty important day considering we had the chairs of the Fed, of the Bank of England, of the European Central Bank, and of the Bank of Japan uh, speaking together at Market Open. And uh, there's definitely a lot to go through and digest with that, but it seems that the market has chosen not to as much digest that in any sort of meaningful way, just to kind of continue to go along about its business and uh, ignore what's coming out of that. And I think that's happened quite a few times now, um, which I think is unfortunate in the long run, but is clearly fortunate in the short run. Anyways, let's take a look at what was actually said. Uh, The market is currently not pricing in two additional rate hikes out of the Fed. However, Powell again reiterated the fact that the majority of the Fed participants expect, in his words, two or more rate increases. It seemed that the ECB and the Bank of England were similarly in a hawkish stance. However, the Bank of Japan was not, and I'm not saying that that's necessarily an important thing, uh, just that they do hear the other side. They do hear the dovish side, um, and they're, they decided to put in two additional rate hikes into their forecast. They decided not to commit to uh, skipping a meeting between each hike, just that they would skip uh, uh, a hike here. Um, doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but he said, don't rule out that they're going to hike at consecutive meetings either. So I think it's a pretty, uh, important thing because the market seems to be very backward looking and almost entirely backward looking because Powell was very forward looking today. He was talking about how further restriction is going to come on the economy. How they paused to survey and see the effects of the tightening that they have just done. He, while he said he doesn't expect a recession, I think it would be absolutely civil war if he said he did expect a recession. Imagine that, the Federal Reserve... I expect to hike two more times, and therefore, I also expect a recession. So he said he doesn't expect a recession, but expects that there's a, or grants that there's a significant probability of that being the case, and uh, that there will be additional restriction coming into the economy, that they are largely uncertain about the effects of the hiking because a lot of it has come, in his words, in the last six, eight, nine months. So, we have a lot of uncertainties ahead of us. We have a lot of uncertainties ahead of us. It was wrong of people to claim a recession would start last year. But I don't think that was necessarily the move. Uh, Every recession or some stat along that line has been preceded by doubling in oil prices. But the doubling of oil prices is not when the recession starts. It starts after the doubling of oil prices. So, um, I think the, we can't rule out the recession card here. Okay. I, we're seeing signs of it. Walgreens earnings. I don't know exactly what caused that stock to do what it did today, midway through the day. Somebody wants to buy the dip. It's not a particularly cheap stock. I'm not saying it's a mispriced stock, uh, but they lowered their earnings forecast going forward. They cited a weaker macroeconomic environment and a more cautious consumer. And General Mills did the same thing. And I'm not, and that stock's down. I'm not saying that's a cheap stock or whatever. I'm not saying that, you know, maybe there's a trend away from cereal, a secular trend away from cereal, just like Powell said the day before SVB failed, that uh, there was a secular trend or the secular trend of lower interest rates was likely over. Um, But I think 
uh, that they are talking about a weakening consumer. These are companies reporting earnings now. I think that's important. I think that is uh, something to keep in mind and to not completely dismiss. We, as Powell said, are just getting into restrictive territory. We are going to be in restrictive territory for a long time. We are more likely than not going to get in even more restrictive territory. And we're going to be there for well over a year. So I expect the two-year yield to be higher, or that's where it should be. You know, it's been only a few days really since the last FOMC meeting. There's still a lot of digestion going on, but I expect that to move higher. And I expect the market to continue its correction. So today was relatively flat, but we are stringing together a few good days. I'm not from a negative person's perspective, although I am still very long areas of the market like energy negative medium term i think the risk reward is very heavily skewed towards the downside and the last two days don't really seem to shake me off that um the micron earnings or lack thereof don't really seem to shake me off that the bank stress tests of the 23 largest banks that have even more stringent capital requirements. Don't shake me off that. What makes me convinced this is a thing is that we have the highest interest rates since before the great financial crisis. We have stock valuations higher than before the preceding eras before the great financial crisis. We have stock valuations that are only exceeded by uh, the dot-com bubble and the COVID bubble. This, you know, we're not cheap here. Yes, if you take out the Magnificent Seven, the multiple does decline, of course. First of all, the Magnificent Seven are very important components of things. If those were to correct even their more historical multiples, each one of them, more historical multiples, it will have an effect. And it's not like Apple just sprung onto the scene. We just accepted Apple and Microsoft as bellwethers. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be negative about the businesses. I'm trying to be negative about the stock prices at very expensive prices. I'm recording this on an iPhone in 2019. Apple had a very clear trend of lengthening iPhone cycles. For the past few years since COVID, people have been talking about this uh, iPhone super cycle. It was supposed to happen with iPhone 14. The iPhone super cycle did not happen. There is quite a large contingent of the populace that is has an iPhone for four years or more. That seems to be something people are somewhat comfortable with, at least a large portion of the population. Not everyone can spend $1,000 on a phone every year. And uh, I don't know if that pile of people is going to shrink if what Walgreens and General Mills said in the last two days ends up being true. So I think the, I think I'm a very fair person right now. I get it. You know, you're tired of hearing negative outlooks. You want to just go long and go long. And believe me, I've been long most of my life. I want to be long. I'm young. It makes sense for me to be long. But at the same time, I want value. I want a good deal. I want something that I think can actually go up and make money. And in this environment where the risk-free rate of return is going up, you know, company credit rates are going up, earnings are going down, uh, value earnings multiples are going up, 
money supply is going down. You know, it's like the opposite, in my opinion, of stock prices should be going up. It's like everywhere I look, I can't get optimistic. Sure, some things were a little bit better than expected, but I think that's that's brought its course. Now we're on a new day where, you know, now second half is supposed to rebound and be stronger than first half. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I have theories, but I, I think the expert theories may be incorrect. And we'll see what happens because based on what I'm looking at, you know, continued fall in earnings. I don't see this as a very good thing. I don't think we should be heading straight towards uh, all-time highs we experienced with lower interest rates, higher earnings, and greater money supply. And the higher, lower interest rates thing is, first of all, a very big thing because there was no alternative. That was a argument that was being used in that environment. Tina trade, there was no alternative. And there are more, a lot of stocks that benefited most from that. These mega cap techs that benefited most from low interest rates because there was no alternative. There was no interest rate trading above all time highs. When earnings have since declined. And sure, Microsoft maybe in the last quarter didn't have an earnings decline. But it sure as heck had a massive growth decline. And you can't have 7% or 9% growth at a company that big with a over 30 multiple. That just is a ripoff. So I'm sorry. I view the market as a ripoff. That's my opinion. Make of it what you will. I think the Fed is serious. The market does not. It has not for a long time. The Fed has been serious, and I expect them to continue to be serious. What what can I what else can I say? You know that that's just that's just what I'm seeing. That's what I'm hearing. I'm really trying to convey to you the best possible thoughts I can as somebody who's very passionate about this and spends a lot of time about with this. Um, but I also can see and understand how. Stocks go to the moon. So that's today's video. And until next time, peace out. And look for good deals.